I'm here with Matt Ernst at Hitachi, and Matt, I've been hearing an awful lot about uh, breast ultrasound and automated stuff. Can you can you fill me in? Can you tell me a little bit about it? Sure, sure. Well, you probably know um, now about half the states in the United States have passed uh, breast density notification laws. Yes. And so what that means is essentially uh, women who get mammograms, uh, if their radiologist determines they have dense breasts, uh, they're now required to notify that woman that you have dense breasts. And that's a significant portion of women. Approximately 40 percent. Wow. Uh, and we also know that these women, uh, the sensitivity and specificity of mammography for these women is not as high it is, as it is for other women. So these laws will inform them of this and then also inform them that they should probably talk to their doctor about other imaging techniques, one of which would be ultrasound. Naturally, yeah. So. Uh, the question is now, if you've got 40% of women who now are looking for ultrasound that maybe weren't before, how are you going to handle this influx of patients when a bilateral breast exam done handheld you know, takes a significant amount of time? Right. So we believe that one of the solutions is an automated breast system like this. This is Sophia. And you can see we've built a long linear probe into the conical structure here. And so the patient will just, we'll use a little bit of acoustic lotion. The patient will, patient will lie down, place her breast right in the center of the cone here, um, turn on the automatic scan, and th this will spin around 360 degrees in 52 seconds. 52 seconds. 52 seconds. We've got the entire breast in a single volume that we can then send over to the radiologist uh, to be read. So this will automatically go to a reading station and next patient. Absolutely. So you can really move. Uh, patients through pretty quickly on this. Exactly. And another great thing about Sophia is, you know, this is, a, this is a process, right? People, as they learn more about the need for breast ultrasound, the patients are growing. In the meantime, you don't have to dedicate an entire room just for whole breast scanning. Oh, we can put this cover on. I have on. an ultrasound table. It becomes an ultrasound table, and the, the scan engines that pair with Sophia are fully featured. Just choose the probes you're going to need, and it, it becomes a just a so your regular now I scanning can, room. I can do thyroids or I can do abdomens, I can do whatever whatever you name I want. It. Oh, very versatile. Absolutely. Very versatile. Well, let's take a look at the output from Sophia. Great. Well, Matt, we just took a, a quick scan and, and shot the information, I guess, over to this to this workstation. Can you tell me a little about what, what we're looking at? Absolutely. So, uh, we sent via DICOM the about 800 images that were taken on the Sophia scan table, sent over to this workstation where it was reconstructed into a volume. And you can see here on the bottom in our coronal view, this is going to let us know where we are in position, you know, 12, 3, 6, 9, um, the normal orientation. And up here, we've got an axial full field across the entire breast view. So in order to survey the breast, all we have to do is make a 180 degree sweep, and we've seen all the breast tissue and we can move on to the next breast. So it's extremely fast, especially since most of these patients are going to be normal. Uh, but if you do find something, again, you have all the data here in a 3D volume set. So we can go to our NPR view, which is going to look very familiar to you know, MRCT radiologists. And now we can go to any particular area and, and view any point in the breast really from, zero in on an, on an area of interest and see it from almost from any arbitrary plane possible interesting so now we've acquired this 800 and something image data set and we can interrogate it also very quickly exactly so you know we can really get, gain a lot of patient throughput this way actually absolutely we've tried to optimize the efficiency on both the acquisition side and the interpretation side because that's really the key to dealing with uh, you know, this new group of patients. Now, uh, let me ask what may be an obvious, or maybe it should be obvious, but it's not to me. So can I be reviewing one study while I'm acquiring the next one? Oh, absolutely. So these can essentially, so one is not slowing down the other, the other process. Correct. We've got a variety of ways that we can implement the, the, uh, the viewer software from a standalone uh, system for you know an aging center that maybe doesn't have the infrastructure already to loading it on to existing servers or even doing you know remote access we have customers where uh, multiple radiologists in multiple locations are reading Sophia from the same 
scanning site. Gotcha. Well, interesting solution to a problem of not only how do we you know help the women with dense breasts, but how do we you know keep the, the patient flow going through the uh, you know through the laboratory, which is also very important, and being able to rapidly in, interpret those scans and and quite frankly, move on to the next. Sure, I mean, it, we know it's the right thing for women, but unless we make it efficient and something that can be integrated into, you know, uh, everyone's daily workflow, it's not gonna get adopted as quickly as it should. Great, well, thanks for sharing. Absolutely, thanks for stopping by, Lee. You bet.